Hi, Eric the Car Guy here. Long time ago I did a video about replacing front brake pads on disc brakes. When I posted that video there were some responses that said, Hey Eric, what about rear brakes? Today you're in luck. Got a car here that needs rear brakes. I know it's a Honda Accord. Rear brakes, rear disc brakes I should say. This is rear disc brakes. Rear disc brakes on different manufacturers vary widely. So this is the Honda Acura setup. Uh, but I will be doing more videos in the future as things show up because the videos I do are based on the cars that come into my shop and I love your requests and I'd love to get to them but I can't always get to them because I don't always have the cars to do the work on or the specific thing that that car needs but I'll do the best I can I'm not going anywhere so long as you aren't let's get started another question I get asked a lot is Eric where do you jack the cars up well in the back this is what I use so if I'm just jacking up the back of the vehicle, there's this guy right here. Now that is a tie down for when it's on like a car carrier or if you put your car in a ditch, the tow truck driver will put a hook on this. This has enough structural integrity to support the weight of the vehicle. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. The other thing people ask me about, especially in the uh, brake drum video is, Eric, where's your jack stands? Well, right here and there. And here, and there, here, and there, here. I don't let the jack all the, well, I let the jack down and let it rest on the jack stands, but I just uh, leave it up so that when I go to take it off the jack stands, it goes much more quickly. See, on the jack stands, but the jack is still there. I think it kind of goes without saying that we need to get the wheels off. Kind of hard to do brakes without doing that. This video I'm going to do something a little bit different and I'm going to show you all the tools that I use for this job. Now some of these things I will cover individually but just to give you a general overview. Impact driver set, big hammer, little hammer, 3 8 ratchet with 14 millimeter socket, vice grips with hose uh, with fuel line on the ends to protect hose, a 12 millimeter wrench, a 10 millimeter wrench, a pocket screwdriver, a, well this is a 3 8 ratchet with a modified tool, we'll go over this in a minute. Uh, you have a silicone paste and anti-seize compound, a half inch ratchet and 7 8 inch wrench for the caliper compression tools. Also we have brake cleaner and you might remember this from the disc brake video to help prevent fluid from going back into the master cylinder. Oh yes, let's not forget our rag. Phase one, to get the outer part of the caliper off, there are two fasteners, one at the top, one at the bottom. I use a wrench, mainly because in this particular model you can't get into here. Forgot to mention a tool, I like this short little pry bar, a stout screwdriver can do the same job. But I'll just, yoink. Done. Something you never like to see on your brake pads. Not good. But if you do see something like this and you've got one side that's worn down this much and the other side looks normal, you may have a problem with that caliper, either being these slide pins. Make sure they move like they should or it could possibly be the caliper itself. Um, if the boot, or if the uh, piston does not return back into its bore, then uh, it could possibly cause that same problem. Sticking caliper, and if that's the case, then you will need to replace it. Not the first time I've had to chisel off a brake pad. What happens underneath these metal shims is rust builds up and decreases the space in here, thus wedging the brake pad into place. That's why I put the anti-seize on the outside of these pads, which you'll see later. I'll start with a good cleaning. Next place I want to clean see it? Can you see it? No. 
Next thing I want to clean are these. And what these are, or what this is, actually, I'm showing you. I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to show you is this little springy thing here, which I can take out. You might need to know this information if you ever have to actually change a caliper. All you need to do to get one of these off is pocket screwdriver, push it one way. This one's going to be reluctant. All right, push it this way then. It won't go one way, take it the other way. There you go. Ta-da! This is a spring, and what it does is when the caliper's on, it pushes on the brake pads to keep them in place, to keep them from coming out in this direction. Keeps them down in there. But also, more importantly, it helps prevent noise. So you don't want to lose this. When I'm in here doing this work, I will clean off the part where the pad touches the spring. Simple enough. Now it's important to know that you do not have to remove this when doing this job. I just did this for demonstration purposes, but this can stay in the caliper and not you won't have to mess with it. Uh, when I go to put this back in, these little metal tabs will probably be bent and I will have to bend them back in this direction in the opposite direction in order to reinstall it. Okay, to reinstall it, let's go get one side up out of there. Same pocket screwdriver method. Bring it up. And this time you're trying to leverage it so that it comes up and locks into place. I'm pushing with my other finger here. There. Ta da! Make sure it's got plenty of springiness there. Now, my procedure, you can do this in any order you like. At this point, what I do. So I'll take my slides out, clean off the goo, and then put new silicone paste. Sil don't use grease or any other kind of lubricants. Use silicone. Silicone's good with heat. Grease will dry up over time and cause these pins to stick. Silicone will not dry out, whereas grease will. So use silicone to lubricate these pins. And you see the bottom one has this little rubber thing on it. So if you took these out and you don't remember how they go back in, the bottom one has the rubber. And if not, what you'll get is a, a click when you apply the brakes a lot of times. And also, if this spring is not installed that I just showed you earlier, if that's not installed correctly, that can also cause a click during brake pad application. Because what that allows us to do is it goes back and forth inside its mount. All right, now that we've got that all lubricated, let's take the outer, or the uh, caliper mount off of the vehicle. This is where your 14 millimeter in your socket come in. Do that for the impacting action. One, one caliper bolt. Ah, ah, ah. There you go. And set that guy aside. Now you can get your rotor off. And some of you may remember this procedure on how to remove Honda rotor screws. I'm probably not going to have to do this, but I usually do this just for good measure. But it's the two hammer method. I did a video on this, so I'm just going to do it. I suspected these came out very easily. And as we can see, this rotor is garbage. Could it be machined? Probably. But how much uh, metal you'd have to take off, would it be worth it in the end? Just buy new rotors. Now I'm pretty sure that this is why you're watching this video. It's because you need to learn, or you need to figure out how to get this caliper piston back inside here so you can accommodate the new pads. Only on calipers where the parking brake assembly is part of the caliper itself is this a concern. 
Some uh, rear discs have a drum brake set up inside here, uh, and there's no parking brake assembly out here. And in that case, you can just compress the piston just like you normally would for a front caliper because none of this mechanism is here. Well, this is a ratcheting mechanism, and it, uh, it needs to be turned back in. Conventionally, this tool is used. This is a general universal tool set. It has different sized discs for turning in different types of calipers. These discs mount onto the end of this tool, just like that, and you turn the caliper piston in. I'm going to show how to hook this up, but I'm also going to show you something else. Now, me, I've worked on a lot of Hondas, and I can't say this was generally my idea, but uh, it's a good idea, so I'm going to show it to you here. This is my caliper turning inner tool, and this actually, for me, is a lot more efficient than breaking out the other tool. Now, all this is is a bolt with a distributor keyway welded onto the end of it. And when I say that, what I mean is, if you've got an old Honda distributor, this piece here, there's a roll pin behind here that you can take out once you get the snap ring out, and you can get this piece off. Weld that onto a bolt, and as you can see, it's shaved down a little bit uh, to accommodate the caliper. You got yourself a uh, caliper pusher inner tool. Kind of cool. Uh, I wish I was a better welder, but what are you going to do? It works. Now, as promised, I'm going to show you both ways. I'm going to show you one using the actual tool that you may be able to find at your auto parts store and rent it, or you can purchase this tool, no big deal. And then I'm also going to show you, well, I'm ultimately going to end up doing it with this. Just like we did with the front calipers, we do not want to force fluid back into the master cylinder. So we are going to, number one, we are going to take our vice grips with fuel line and uh, you, there we go, they were stuck together. Going to take our vice grips with fuel line and put it on the supply line to the caliper itself. This will help protect the hose from getting hurt because hose on hose, don't read into that. And then we're going to get our 10 millimeter wrench, put it on the bleeder valve, take our, oh, sorry, didn't mean to show that logo, take our uh, brake fluid recovery reservoir, I like that, so I'm going to call that from now on, put that onto here. And this, this is the setup. I'm going to put this setup back on, but I'm going to show you how to put uh, this tool in first. All right, before you do any spinning on this piston, and this is what you're doing, because these notches in this tool will fit into this slot on the caliper. They will. I swear they will. Yeah, there we go. So it'll fit into that slot and you'll be able to turn it. But before you start turning, I want you to do something. Take your pocket screwdriver, dip it in your silicone paste. That same stuff you use to lubricate those slide pins. And go around, just sort of peel back the boot of the piston and just go around the outside of it and try to get that paste in between all the way around the caliper piston and the dust boot. That's all you need to do. If you don't do this, it's possible that the rubber boot here will twist. And if it does, like that, yeah, you see it? If it does twist up in here, it'll, it'll bind this piston up. To get this tool in, you want to crank this all the way back. You want to install this, and with mine, there's pins that are closer together and farther apart. I'm going with the ones that are closer together. And since it's a nice slot, it's usually, it might look like this or it might look like a giant plus sign. You want to slide that up in there. Wow. This one is extended out quite far, and I'm having some difficulty. 
which is part of the reason why I use my other tool, because this tool didn't always work out. There were certain situations where it didn't work, other situations where it was indispensable. Yep, I can get one side in, but not the other, because I can't back it off any farther. This looks like a job for Eric the Car Guy's tool. This, quite simply, just goes in like that, and poof, you're done. So let's do it. Let's start with my tool, and I'll show you the other one. It would have been a real good idea for me to knock this bleeder loose before I took it off. The hindsight is 2020. And with my tool, it just goes into a 17 millimeter socket and onto a 3 8 inch ratchet. And you just start spinning. Now some of these, if they've gone out too far, you need to sort of push in as you twist. The mechanism inside the caliper needs to re-engage. Alright, we showed you how I started, and we've got it in far enough probably to use the actual tool. So let's do that. This thing, this thing does, it, it pushes as it stalls. Wait a second, you didn't move at all. Make sure your bleeder's really loose. You know, sometimes I really don't like it when I have problems on the show, but then other times I'm thinking, what if you ran into this problem and I wasn't there to help you with a shiny video? Well, here we go. This is what I would do. I'm thinking this bleeder, I'm thinking this bleeder is gummed up with gook. I'm just going to take it out. Yep, bleeder's useless. Bet you want to know how to make it unuseless, huh? There's supposed to be a little hole here. When I get done with it, it will be there. Cleaning bleeder the easy way. You may need to take it the rest of the way with like a, a pick. Go in there. And, and it's good to have these bleeders cleaned out because, you know, you're never really sure when you're going to need them. Now, if I didn't care about my master cylinder, I'm not saying that you're going to ruin the master cylinder by doing this, but there's a chance. And if there's a chance, and all you have to do is make sure everything works like it's supposed to, why not do it? All right, now let's put this guy back in here. Hey, look at that. There's stuff coming out already. Working like a charm now. Oh yeah, who's your daddy? Okay, use the other tool. Could you use a screwdriver to do this? Maybe. Would it be harder? Yep. All right, install the tool, twist this to get it lined up. Half inch ratchet. Goes on the end over here. So if you wonder what that noise is, you want it to turn clockwise. And then the wrench goes here. Keep tension on it. And this one, well, I got the wrong wrench, but you get the idea. And you just twist. And every once in a while, you want to twist this nut because they don't quite turn at the same time. All right, now you can already see that this is going awry. 
which is why I prefer my method. But at least this way, you know how to use it. I'm going to finish her off with mine. You want to make sure it's completely bottomed out. It'll still spin, but it'll be bottomed out. All right, now it's all the way in there. Tighten down my bleeder. Important. Come here. You will find that, yes, these will want to fight you. You want to make sure that this slot is directly straight up and down. Now some of these are like plus sign things, but see how that's slightly off? You want to line it up right with the middle of the caliper. You want to line it up right with this. So you want it at 12 o'clock. Not quite. Coming around again. And don't ever try to turn it in the opposite direction. Turn it only one way. Turn it clockwise only. Once again, there are different manufacturers have different ways of doing this, but if you're working on a Honda, this is pretty much the rear brake setup. All right, so make sure that that piston is at 12 o'clock. You can remove your vice grips now. See, no real harm was done to this hose in the making of this movie. New rotors are coated with a substance called Cosmoline. It is a rust inhibitor. If these things sat on the shelf without this coating on it, this would just be one big hunk of rust. Uh, the way I get it off is I just take a little bit of my brake clean, spray it around the outside, get a rag, wipe it down. I'm not worried about this. I'm just worried about where the brake pads make contact. Just an FYI, whether you can see that or not. Stamped on the outside of this is a minimum thickness. In this case, most Honda rotors are actually eight millimeters. When you install the rotor, make sure that your rotor screw holes are lined up with the actual holes on the, on the uh, hub assembly. There you go. And this is the part where you say what I'm about to say. Where did I put those screws? Found them. I take my screws, because I know that they're notoriously difficult to get out. And I just take the very tip of them and just touch the gook on there. See how I got that little bit of anti-seize just on the end of it? That way when I thread it in, it will coat the threads with a little bit of anti-seize. And hopefully it will come out the next time I need it to come out. That would be great. I just tap it a couple of times. You don't need to kill it. Your caliper assembly, reinstall it. Ta -da. Now it's time to install your brake pads. When you get brake pads, you'll get two of them with brake wear indicators on them. Two pads. Now personally, when these come from the factory, they come with the indicator on the inside pad and it's facing down. And what I mean by indicator is this, this little metal tab, when a pad gets worn down far enough, actually makes contact with the rotor and makes a heck of a noise. That's what that's there for. That's why it's called an indicator. The indicators, in my personal opinion, should always be put in the same orientation. And on the back ones, that is in the down position. So the indicator should be at the bottom. Uh, and I, I, I call it on the leading edge because the first well, technically the first place as the car is rolling in a forward direction to make contact is with that. I see it a lot where people put them on with them on the top. I hate that. <laughs> I put them down here on the bottom. Before I install the brake pads, the outer brake pads, those are interchangeable. I mean, you got those here, there, and everywhere. For installing the brake pads, I take a little bit of my anti-seize compound. When I say a little bit, that's what I mean. And I just put a little bit where it would make contact with those springs, a little bit where it makes contact with the caliper on the outside and the inside. Just like in front disc brakes. Same thing over here. And you see how much I'm putting on. That's just a little bit. 
There. All the important parts are now lubricated. Install it inside the caliper and you can sort of gauge how easily it moves. Sometimes they, they don't want to go in and just like that a little smack will do you. But you want to make sure that they, you know, they've got some movement to them. Now quite simply, and this is the reason why you had to put that at 12 o'clock, is because on the back of this inner pad there's that pin that sticks up. That pin needs to fit inside that slot that you used to turn it in. See? It needs to fit inside the slot. If it doesn't fit inside the slot, you're going to get a spongy brake pedal. And the reason is, is because the caliper is going to make contact with this pin instead of the whole brake pad. So it's going to, it's going to be pushing this in an odd uh, orientation. Also, you want to make sure that these are lined up like that. If they're not, if they're twisted like this one was, it won't necessarily go on because there's these little slots on the caliper itself when you go to put this on that that needs to go into. See how nice that was? I sometimes put, once again, just a small, like that much, anti-seize on these bolts. That way I can get them back out again should I need to. You'll hear a little bit of noise when you spin it. That's the new pads that are there. But other than that, you're done. You did it. Good job. One last part of this operation I want you to do before you, you know, after you get to, after you're done with your brake job and you get your wheels on and everything else, is I want you to pump the brake pedal until you feel like you got a brake pedal again. Just like with front brakes, uh, there's a there's a little bit of space that's there between the caliper and the brake pads. If you don't take that space up, the first couple of times you hit the brake pedal, you're not going to have brakes. You don't want to do that. So do this, you'll be fine. Next, top off the master cylinder just a little bit to try and replace some of the displaced fluid that uh, you took out when you uh, cracked the bleeder loose. You're good to go. All right, now you open up the uh, the hydraulic system on the brakes. Do you need to bleed it? No. Because you pinched off the line up at the top, fluid did not flow in that direction back towards the master cylinder. It also could not flow out. So when you compress the piston, you just displaced all the fluid that was behind the piston. You didn't do anything else to it. So there should be no air in the system if you do it like I did in the video. Uh, if you do run into a problem and you do have to bleed the brakes, no big deal. Bleed the brakes. And if you use the setup that I've got here that I've shown you in the other disc brake video, uh, you can see the air actually coming out of the bleeder. And you'll know if you've gotten it all out. Yeah, do the same thing on the other side. It's not rocket science, but the hardest part is turning that piston back in. Most important thing to remember, in my opinion, is a little bit of silicone around the outside of that dust boot so it doesn't get all twisted up on you. Other than that, you should be good to go. I am Eric the Car Guy. Uh, as always, you can visit me at ericthecarguy.com, and uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I uh, usually post things on a daily basis about what I'm doing, so if you want to be in the know about what's happening in the world of Eric the Car Guy, that's where you go. And, of course, the website is always there for your viewing. That's it. Be safe. Have fun. Stay dirty. See ya.